One main line of my research, though, focuses on policies that affect English language learners. And in particular, I study the policy of reclassification. And that's when a student who is an English learner, so that's a child who comes from a home where the language spoken uh, primarily is not English, right? So maybe Spanish is spoken in the home. And then if that child isn't at a level that is deemed uh, proficient by the school standards, then that child is labeled an English learner. And eventually we expect that student to become reclassified as fluent English proficient when they reach a particular level of English proficiency. Reclassification is oftentimes much more than just a change in label. It's a change in services, settings, peers, and teachers. Um, and of course we want students to be English proficient, but what my research does is it has a different starting point and says since it's not just a proficiency thing that we're measuring and then we're not changing anything else, we are changing other things. And are we changing things appropriately when kids are ready to be transitioned away from those services? So this is important because if we don't provide services long enough for English learners and we remove them at a point in their English language development when they're still benefiting from these services, then what we're going to see is they're going to end up struggling when those services are removed or when they're put into an English-only environment without those services and when they're expected to perform at a certain level and we haven't given them the proper supports. Now, conversely, we don't want to provide those services for too long because if we do, then we're going to be providing them services that are going to be at a level that's well below what they're capable of and they need to have uh, opportunities for advancing and taking more advanced curricula. And so then what we need to think about is where is that sweet spot? And that's what my research is focusing on. It's using advanced quantitative methods so we could say how can we determine what that sweet spot is to help policymakers then establish policies that are going to help transition students at the appropriate time so that we're not providing services for too long, and we're also not prematurely removing services that are beneficial. If you compare students, one who barely fails to attain the criteria for reclassification and one who just barely attains the criteria for reclassification, those two students have very different outcomes. So now this is really interesting because we're not comparing apples and oranges. We're comparing two kids who are very, very similar and perform almost identically on the test but one of them is getting very different services than the other one. And what's happening is the student who is getting reclassified as fluent English proficient is no longer getting the English language development services they need. They're not getting those courses, not exposure to those teachers and peers in those classes. And what's happening is their subsequent achievement is actually suffering as a result of this for students in high school. In elementary and middle school, we don't really see any evidence of any sort of negative effect. So this is suggesting that perhaps the transition between the services and settings in elementary school and middle school might be appropriate in these school districts. However, at the high school level, the transition is not appropriate because those students are performing at about a fifth of a standard deviation worse on next year's English language arts test in one of the school districts. In another one, they're performing almost a third of a standard deviation worse. So these are pretty large effects given what we typically see in terms of effect sizes in school policies. Not only are they performing worse on the achievement tests that are given to them, but they're also graduating at rates that are about 10 percentage points lower than the kids who are, again, pretty much identical to them, but just didn't get reclassified. So this makes us really question, what is this about reclassification? And do we really want to keep pushing kids towards reclassification? Yes, we want them to be English proficient. We want them to be able to, to succeed, or, or to even better than English proficient, to be bilingual, right? But we need to think, what are we doing in schools that might be harming them when we transition them away from those services? the implication of these results for policymakers is that if students in high school are being harmed on their next year's test and in terms of their graduation because they're getting reclassified at the threshold point that policymakers determined, what my colleagues and I are saying is 
make the threshold harder so that you continue to provide the services for longer. So that you're not comparing these two kids, you get a couple kids over here who are at a higher level of English language proficiency. And then what we should see is that you're providing the services longer that they need, and then they're able to succeed, um, and that they're graduating at higher rates, they're performing better in their courses, on their standardized tests, the things that we want. We want them to be successful, and so we need to continue to provide the services to enable them to be successful.